gentlemen, beautiful people, we are in hour number 10 of our 24 hour live stream. I'm actually feeling great because uh, the next individual that I'm about to have doesn't really require an introduction. Uh, and it's just very perfect timing to be here at 10 o'clock Eastern time because he's a 10 out of 10 when it comes to not just being an amazing stand up comedian, uh, not just a great actor, but uh, an all around uh, amazing human being. And I'm always grateful for the fact that every single time that I've asked him for his valuable time, he has graciously given it to me. Without any further ado, Maz Jabrani, how are you, brother? Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm good, Iman. I'm coming to you live from my bed, so I'm not. I didn't go oh. to my office. I was too lazy. Oh, how I'm romantic! My life. How romantic! <laughs> <laughs> this is where how all the you? action how happens. Great, great. Hey, how are you? So uh, the, the plan. So the plan. Yeah. So wait a minute. So Iman. So so you're gonna be 24 hours. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, it's not just me, it's my entire team. Here in Miami, it's me and Anush, and then in DC studio that I have, it's about 15 of us over there, and we're doing 24 hours straight. That is crazy. Have you ever done an all-nighter when you were in college? Did you, were you, were, did you go to college? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I thought that was I thought that was a joke. Okay, yeah, great. I mean, yeah, I mean, oh. I could I could I could look like somebody that hasn't gone to college, I guess. But uh, but did you um, ever pull an all nighter to write a, to write a paper? I'm just curious. I I, I, I definitely I I'm sure I did, but not 24 hours straight. Like literally, like 20 years ago, I was working at this um, city event. I used to work for like, the city, and like we had to do like the overnight shift and like move around golf carts and just protect this outdoor area for like a festival. And that was the last time that I remember like actually having to work for 24 hours. So it's a very unique experience, and I'm, I'm very eager to see how I feel in about eight, nine hours. That's what I was going to say, because what happens is when you start these all-night things, you're like, at, in the beginning, you got everyone on board. You've got your Red Bull. You've got your snacks. You're like, you got the music. You're like, woo, everything's going great. Two in the morning, yeah, you're still going. You're like, yeah, three o'clock, you start, you start a little bit. Go, and then four, at like four, you're like, what the hell are we doing? By five o'clock, you're like, you, you start like, you know, getting busy. So it's coming, yeah. but you'll push through it. The good news is you got other people on, on board to keep you going. And yeah. I and I hope you got the, um, did you get the electrical shock thing to, to, to <laughs> the, the, tase, the tase gun, to tase you awake? You need that. Is, is that what we need? I'm going to go ahead and call Miami Beach Police Department yeah. to come and tase us to just give us that jolt that we need, you know? Yeah, we're going to tell them we're Persians. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Uh, one of my producers, Anush, is in the background. That's the voice you're hearing. Uh, oh, first of all, I, so are, are you still uh, planning on performing tonight? Because you, you were originally saying you're going to be driving to like Laugh Factor. Or yes. Something? So what happened was I was supposed to do two shows. So um, places like Florida are open for comedy clubs. A lot of these comedy clubs are going. Yeah. Um, places like California, the clubs. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the clubs closed. So mm -hmm. what they're doing is, for example, the Laugh Factory. <coughs> you know, our our buddy Tehran's been doing it too. Is they'll do a zoom show so they'll set up television monitors you go on stage you're looking at the monitors it's a zoom so mm. you see a bunch of people and in the room with you are you know you know maybe one or two staff members from the laugh factory maybe another comedian so it's a it's a big room that usually seats 200 300 200 to 300 people it's only got five people in there they're all spread out to produce mm. this thing so you do the zoom show so they ended up postponing that this week to next week Meanwhile, okay. there's another show I got later tonight, which is an outdoor socially distanced show. And I've done those before, too. And we're in, just, in L.A. I, yeah, it's in West L.A. So so the comedy clubs have been shut down. Yeah. But people who, who were bookers in these clubs, some of them have been able to find parking lots or the mm. outside of a nightclub that had the outdoor patio. Right. And they've been able to do these outdoor shows. And it's been cold. It's going to get warm, which will be nice. But tonight's a little cold, so people show up with blankets. It looks like – I always joke. I say it looks like um, – because it's a – you know, it's maybe 40, 50 people blanketed up in the corner, and you're up on stage telling jokes. I said it, it feels like the uh, like we're in The Walking Dead, and the zombies are coming to get us, and we're doing one last show <laughs> before they get us. So, uh, actually, I, I've seen uh, like I've seen Dave Chappelle's like outdoor ones, and that's really how it feels like that kind of eerie feeling. Um, but you know, it kind of still works in some way, you know. Yeah. Well, listen. All you need is to be able to do some shows. You know, we also did um, drive-in shows. Those were interesting. So you're on a stage, yeah, and they're projecting you onto a big screen behind you, <clears throat> and people are in their cars. <clears throat> and so the first time I did it, I didn't really know how to deal with it because. They, you can't hear their laughter. They're in their car listening and listening to you on a radio station. So they're laughing, but you don't hear it. 
But then the second time I did, so the first time I did it, I thought I had done 45 minutes. I looked at my watch. It was only 30 minutes. So it oh. took, yeah. The second time I did it, I, I figured it out. You're supposed to basically encourage them to honk. So, oh, if they lie, so you got some kind of engagement. <laughs> yeah. So I did it the second time. It was, it was a blast. We had a good time. People were honking. I was dancing. I was telling jokes. I felt really good about it. So um, have you left L.A. in the past year at all? Or have you been just with the family and just hasn't gone anywhere? I've gone on a few trips. One trip I did was I went to Arizona because because Arizona, Texas, Florida, uh, Tennessee, a lot of th those are the places where they continue to have comedy shows, but yeah. at limited capacity. But still, it was indoor shows. And mm -hmm. I thought to myself, even though I'm uncomfortable being in a room with that many people, I said, I want to try it just to be able to say that I did that during the pandemic. So I went mm -hmm. to Arizona. The room usually seats 500 people. They had limited the seating to about 250 and in my mind and in my heart i was hoping that we would only have maybe a hundred show up because i didn't want that many in there and mm. that's kind of how it turned out because people were hesitant to go to a club and i understand right so you look out in the audience and and half the audience is masked up the other half has their mask off they're eating and you just feel the discomfort however being on stage was great because we were telling jokes and we did five shows it was me in tehran and so we did one thursday two friday two saturday mm -hmm. you know by the fifth show of that weekend you're going oh my god i feel it i'm ready to get back into it so that's the one time when we went to do shows in arizona and the other time that i left um my home actually two other times one was my wife and i volunteered to be poll watchers for nevada during the election so we took the yeah. whole family out there we went and sat there all day you know, all those people that they were afterwards, they were saying, oh, these people were, you know, they observed some inconsistencies or whatever. We were those people sitting there watching people and where I was, everything seemed legit. Um, and the th third time I left was more recently, <clears throat> we went to Lake Tahoe to go skiing and it's outdoors and you're wearing your mask and they only let you and a family member on the slope. So that's the three times I've left the house. Are you... Uh... Are you having Florida on your horizon of potential places that you would go to for a possible show? Well, it's funny because I recently I was supposed to I was supposed to have shows in Dallas and Houston, and then I was supposed to have shows in Florida. Hmm. And because I realized, okay, if I have those shows now, I have to start promoting them now. So I didn't feel comfortable promoting it yet. So hmm. we pushed all those to later. But a show did come up <clears throat> recently. I'm actually going down to. University of Central Florida for the university to do an outdoor show in Orlando. Oh, so nice. <clears throat> the night before, we're going to do a show at the Improv uh, in Orlando. All in, right. Like late March. I think it's March like 20th or something. Ah. Limited seating. We'll go there. We'll do it, me and Tehran. And, uh, you know, that's so, it. So, so this, and this might actually need to carry to a side chat. But in case you recall, since the pandemic, I've been spending 90% of my time in Miami. So this studio right here is actually Miami. My team is DC. And, um, you know, Orlando is only two hours away from Miami. And so maybe we can do something. So like, why you're here, we tried to squeeze something else in because I know that the Persians in Florida, when was the last time that you were here in, in, in like Miami or something? Tehran and I did shows in Miami, I think it was sometime in 2019. Now, okay. if we're going to do something, you got to hit me up soon because yeah. Thursday's Orlando Improv. Friday is that is the um, is the what you call it is that college. And then Saturday we're flying back. I've already booked my flights. But I'm sure okay. we could move things around. But we have to figure something. I'll out. have my people contact your people. We'll your figure people, it out. my people will do it. Um, so listen, if you recall, we spoke. I think uh, it was really at the very beginning of. Um, the quarantine, I think it was one to say May or something of last year. Um, did, did, did you think that February of 2021 would still be where we are? Or did you think we would be out of it? Well, you know, as it went on, it obviously got worse and worse in terms of just the natural thing. I mean, America, obviously, one of the problems we have, it's it's the it's the the pro of being American as well as the con, which is we're we're very ind independently minded. But the con happens when something like this happens where you need to all be on board and agree to wearing masks and keeping socially distanced and staying home. And we have a large part of the population who doesn't believe it. And they go, no, I'm going to go do my thing. And so, yeah. yeah, early on, I mean, last year I have I have there's videos I have on my phone from around this time last year, maybe a, maybe like right after the lockdown happened, where I, I had all these shows lined up and there's videos of me saying, hey, Toronto. 
Um, I had to cancel my show for March 6th, but we've rescheduled it. I'll be there September or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So all those shows just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. So no, I, I, I didn't think, I, I thought by now we would have been out of it. But as the year went on, I started realizing, oh, this is going to be longer than we thought. So that's kind of just been what it's been. Yeah, I mean, actually, that's why I keep on telling people is that, you know, my main business is being entertainment. And so bride and grooms booking us six, nine, 12 months in the, down the road. And so I felt like I always had the pulse of what people's mindsets were, because you could tell if they're comfortable to host like a 50, 100 person event. And I really thought that by January, February, March, like now and whatever, that our wedding season would kind of have us contact, they would be contacting us. But it was very clear about a month ago that yeah. ain't nobody contacting. 2021 is unfortunately like a wash too. So similar to you that you book your shows three, six, nine, 12 months ahead. Uh, I guess you kind of had that foresight as well, you know, which is unfortunate. And hopefully we kind of get through that much quicker, you know, as far as getting. Well, I'm point. starting to the see a little line. bit, like I said, I'm starting to see a little bit of, like Taco I said, Duke. even even in LA, they're starting these outdoors, more of these outdoor shows. And as the numbers go down, the hope is that as the numbers go down, people don't get complacent and go, oh, this is great. Let's go lick each other. You know, <laughs> hopefully people will stay, you know, cautious, wear their yeah. masks, um, right. stay with their families, you know, and, and realize that <clears throat> even though we're getting vaccinated, Mm -hmm. that there's still a possibility of spreading these strains so that if we can keep that up and also by the way the new administration is really pushing hard they mm -hmm. believe in science as opposed to the previous administration <laughs> mm -hmm. so that really helps as well yes. i was gonna say how are you doing with not having the subject that you had for plenty of your content not be <laughs> there so anymore happy. it's like it's like a double-edged so... sword you know like on one no, hand you no, don't no, have no, as no, much no. content <laughs> No, no, no. I'm so happy. First of all, content is going to always be there, right? Whether it's yeah. Ted Cruz or it's like, you know, so so Ted Cruz gives us material. But then also like today I go to use the bathroom and there's no toilet paper. And I'm like, am I the only person in this house who realizes when there's no toilet paper? So there's family material. There's all kinds of material. So I don't yeah. mind. The, the, the niceness is I feel like for four years we were, it was like a Stockholm syndrome where yeah. we all were used to it, waking up and going, what's next, what's next? What did he say now, what did he do now? And so it's been nice this past month to wake up and actually think about real issues, not have to think about yeah. a tweet about Rosie O'Donnell or Kim Jong-un or whoever yeah. he was making fun of and just be like, oh wow, you know, there's global warming. Yes, let's talk about it. You know, there's yeah. a pandemic, woohoo. You know, it's like, we can talk about real issues. So it's, it's right. I, I feel like a big relief has come about yeah like i mean it just seemed like we were always on edge as a country and as a result of being a superpower like uh, the world being on edge so i do feel like even though we're in the middle of a pandemic for at least a lot of us we do feel that breath of fresh air a little bit even though we can't enjoy the fresh air too much outside but you know at least inside of our homes <laughs> well yeah it feels like it feels like there's people it's not just that Trump left and Biden came. It's the people that left with Trump and the people that came with Biden. Even when you look at the, even when you look at his like, you know, Trump's uh, um, secret, uh, uh, press secretaries that would yell at the press and you, yeah. you're like, obviously they were lying, lying, lying versus this new lady, Jen Psaki, who she doesn't have an answer. She goes, I got to circle back to you. I'll, it's just, <laughs> it's just a calmness to it. Yeah, and there's definitely. also the people that are, that are now doing things are people who, you know, for example, the guy, uh, uh, Anthony Blinken, who is the secretary of state, is actually a diplomat. That's the, that's the job of a, of a secretary of state is to be a diplomat. Mm -hmm. He's an actual diplomat with, with a history of di being a diplomat. Mike Pompeo was a hawk who was not didn't come from a diplomatic background. He came from c Congress and he had and, and he basically, uh, uh, you know, they, they rooted out a lot of the diplomacy out of the State Department. So just those are just two examples. But it mm -hmm. feels like a lot of a lot of like amateurs left. I mean, Dr. Atlas, the guy they had running the pandemic out of the White House right. was saying, oh, let's just go for uh, herd immunity, which <laughs> people say, if you look at the numbers, if you really wanted to wait and get the herd immunity, three about three or so million people would be dying just to get to that. So right. it's nice to have those people gone and then watch these people and go, oh, that's the person. Because the fact is, Iman, the people that were running it, like when I would watch them, I was like, I could be running this, which they could have, <laughs> I'm serious, under Trump, he could have called you and be like, Iman, I want you to run the interior, you know, the infrastructure bill. 
Yeah. And you would have shown, that's the kind of people he had. And you would have shown up and been like, uh, I don't know, let's build some bridges. I'm not sure. And, yeah. but, but, the, but the fact that that was the case makes me worried. I was like, you would pick somebody like me to run anything. I was like, that's not good. I'm not, you know, I want people. Or like the, the like the secretary of education. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious. Like, I could have, yeah, I, yeah. I could not believe like she had absolutely zero things on her resume that would make her qualify for the situation. But yeah. anyways, that's, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, so we get to move on to a, a new chapter in, in politics. Um, uh, Boz, I don't want to keep up, keep you up for too long because uh, I feel like you can already get ready to call the night and, and sleep over there. I'm going to go but, tell jokes. I'm going to go tell jokes. Oh, you are going to go still tonight. I got the outdoor show still to do. Oh, yeah, that's tonight. This, okay. I'm, I'm going to be driving. So, so I'm, I'm going to take up about five, ten minutes of your time. And it, it's probably not like the most hilarious topic. But, you know, a lot of people, they look to you for humor for happiness and you know you have to you're in a kind of career where you constantly have to be um like this you know and i'm i'm wondering like uh um in the past year what what have you done for yourself to kind of just um make sure that you have a good mental health going on i mean you you're, you're growing a family which in it by itself without the pandemic i can only imagine how difficult that is even though you have amazing kids and amazing wife but like in general like especially because i always feel for uh, a lot of people that I know are, are going through a hard time, you know, and so I know that they look to you for laughter. But what do you look for to keep yourself strong minded, positive and, uh, and, and high energy? You know, the 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 fact of living at home and everyone's at home, the kids are at home, my wife's at home, I'm at home, everyone's at home. You know, it just intensifies your day to the point where when the day ends, sometimes you look around, you go, what did I do? Why am I so tired? You're exhausted. Mm -hmm. because all the time you know when you're not at home all the time you know if i'm traveling for shows maybe i'm napping on the airplane i'm napping in the car maybe i have time to myself there's a lot of other things you can do but when you are on and everyone's on it's exhausting so you got to do some things you're right and it's pretty cyclical so one thing i've done that i really have enjoyed i've been going for runs in the neighborhood and when i go on those runs i listen to my podcasts those mm -hmm. have been great um, every once in a while, my wife and I will find a good show that we like. We watch that together. The kids have been, cause now they're 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. So they found on Hulu shows like 30 rock or, um, uh, um, ugly Betty, these older shows that we got to watch together. They've enjoyed. So that's sometimes a good relief. The other thing that's been good is, you know, I've been doing my podcast back to school with Maj Brani. Mm -hmm. I do that with Tehran. And that gives me something to look forward to because I'm interviewing really interesting people. Yeah. And so <clears throat> whether it's it's basically work, it's not stand up comedy, but I got to prepare for it. I got to go. I got to do it. So as much as I can, I've been trying to remain somewhat productive, but I've also been trying to because it's a full day again. You know, it's not just by the way, you said like you used to have that hour in the commute, which was not work. Now you wake up, you're at work. Right. <laughs> so. The key is to find, in my opinion, a balance between definitely you, you, you don't want to be, you know, and there's some people like us in the live entertainment who, who wake up and they go, oh, there's no live entertainment. So we really have zero job to do. Mm -hmm. But if you could create jobs, whether it's saying, for example, like you've created this thing right now, 24, the next 24 hours you're working. So now whether you're making money or not, that's another question. Mm -hmm. But but the idea is you're working, you're staying active, you're, you're, you're engaged. So find those things that you can do, whoever you are. Maybe it's things around the house. I did a lot of housework where I was saying, oh, that thing's broken. I've, I've been wanting to fix that for a year. Let me go fix it. So you, you've been like saying that? that or has your wife been saying, Maz, no, that's I've been, been broken? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I've been doing it because you look around, you're like, oh, I'm home. I may as well fix it. So I've been yeah. going to the, you know, to the hardware store, getting the right thing. And, you know, so... Definitely, like I said, you need to find things to do, but also you need to give yourself that time to decompress. We got a dog, we got a pandemic puppy, so I walk her a lot. That's always fine, you know. I get to walk around and listen to my stuff. So, you know, you know, I was just I was just on a um, a lady who was on my podcast. Her name's Amanda White. She's got a uh, an Instagram page where uh, she's a therapist. She gives advice, and she was saying. A lot of us are hard on ourselves. So when you sit there, sometimes you go, God, I haven't really worked or done anything for a while. She says, try to not be as hard on yourself. That voice comes probably from your childhood when your parents were saying, 
what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then now you're like, oh my God, I'm not doing anything. Well, yeah. a lot of people aren't doing anything. And she was saying what you can do is you can make a list, make a list with three columns. And in the first column, put the things you have to do that day, which mm -hmm. is, you know, feed your dog, uh, uh, whatever, uh, you know, take to get gas for the car and go grocery shopping. What are those three things? Then the second column, put things that you'd like to do, which is, for example, she said, maybe you say, instead of um, ordering dinner again from out, I'll, I'll cook dinner. Mm -hmm. And then the third column are fantasy, like, oh my God, I might go to the beach and take a surfing lesson. So she said, if you do it like one, two, three, then if you just can finish those first goals, the things you have to do, by the end of the day, you go, at least I got those done. I didn't get to these other two, but that's fine. So just be easier on yourself. That's a big thing you got to work on. You have like a feeling of accomplishment and that kind of prevents you from get, going down a rabbit hole of being too hard on yourself, basically. Yeah, and also listen, we look out and we see guys, oh, Jeff Bezos is doing great during the pandemic. People are <laughs> making money on GameStop. People are, you know, this and that. And you go, oh my God, oh, I should have gotten in on Bitcoin 10 years ago. What am I doing with my life? Well, again, you know, here you are. Don't be so hard on yourself. Count your blessings. There are people who have it much worse than you do. And, you know, it's okay to, if, if the line of work that you're in has been affected in a way, if you're in the, in the live entertainment industry, if you're in the hospitality industry, if you're in some of these places where you got laid off and now you're sitting around going, what am I going to do? Take it easy. It's fine. A month or two, you know, start, you know, finding things to do that are pr productive. And it'll all work itself out. Don't be so hard on yourself. Awesome. Well, I, I love those words of advice, man. Um, I really hope that you get to go on uh, stages all around the world again. Uh, it's been a treat to kind of see you continue to progress in your career and making literally millions of people laugh. I can't imagine a, um, a, a greater job than to have the power to make people laugh. And you do it with such class, so much grace, so much humility. Uh, and I really, really appreciate you and your time. And um, I don't want to keep you any longer because you got to go rock a mini outdoor show. So go do what you do. Thank you again for making time. Say hi to your lovely family.